Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to Gaty Guests with me, your host, Jerry Taylor. Now, over the next few shows, I'm going to be interviewing some of the hottest talent in Scottish theatre. And my first guest is no stranger to the Gaty stage, especially when it comes to pantomime. Not only is he one of the greatest panto stars of Scottish theatre, but he's also an incredible writer and all-round performer. That's it. You've guessed it. It's Mr Fraser Boyle. Now, I've left him sitting on the stage, so let's go and meet him and have a wee yap. Catch you on the other side. There you are. Hello. <laughs> Hello there, how's it going? No bad, no bad. I've just been <laughs> waiting a half an hour for you, but you're here, so that's nice. I was filling out my track and trace, <laughs> sanitising my hands. <laughs> well, you're, oh, lovely wee cards you've got Oh, I know, it's so professional. <laughs> <laughs> you, you seen my desk? I have, I've been waiting here for half an hour. What else can I look at? <laughs> uh, we're just going to oh. declare the hair before declare we go any hair. further. Look at this. <laughs> this is like the best I can do. <laughs> like a wee cockatiel. <laughs> what did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> right, enough of our nonsense, let's get this right. started. So, first question I've got for you. I want to know, what was your first ever experience of a theatre, a first memory of a theatre? So it was 1985 and it was at Perth Theatre and we were sitting in a box, my family, mm -hmm. and we were watching um, Peter, Peter Pan mm -hmm. and Captain Hook was being played by uh, Ricky Fulton. Right. And I don't remember the play, obviously, I was three years old, but I remember really vividly front cloth, at the front tabs and he's there and Ricky Fulton dressed as Captain Hook is telling the audience what he's going to do to Peter Pan, he's going to do it, you know, he's going to get him essentially. Aye. And I just remember being so outraged at what he was saying <laughs> and there must have been a lull in the audience because at one point I just went, you're a bad man! I just shouted, you're a bad man <laughs> at Ricky Fulton. But it wasn't like the TV, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he turned round and looked right at me and said, I eat little girls like you with Brussels sprouts. <laughs> but he knew, he knew I was a boy. He was did just he? on the wind up. <laughs> yes, he did. Well, I'm assuming he did. <laughs> For the purposes of this story, he did. And my sister shouted back, that's not a girl, that's my brother. So, yeah, that is my first ever memory of theatre. Uh, hand to God. Absolutely love that. So your first memory, you got to actually interact with Ricky Fulton. Yes. An yeah. absolute legend. And you got a laugh for the yeah. theatre at the same time. So that, so that would have been your first laugh in a theatre. Yeah, it was, yeah. And, and last. Yeah, and they paid me as well. I was credited. That's amazing, getting called a lassie in front of a full packed theatre by Ricky Fulton. You can't get a better experience than that for your first one. Well, who knew that? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be the, the first time I'd get called a lassie in front of an audience full of people. Right enough. So, Ricky Fulton, I know by speaking to you in the past, that he's one of your inspirations, watching yeah. Scotch and Rye. Yeah. Who, who else, what other celebrities, celebrities even, would you say has inspired you over the years? Oh, always, uh, so many. Always, always funny, funny comedy. Um, I love, I, I, I don't even know where to begin. Lots of Scottish ones, obviously, Ricky Fulton, yeah. Stanley Baxter, mm -hmm. um, uh, Dorothy Paul. Um, I love Kath and Kim, that's an Australian one. That's like 20 years old now, I love Kath and Kim. But look at all the old, I love a lot of the old variety performers, um, stand-up Chick Murray, um, who else? Les Dawson. I love yeah, Les yeah. Dawson. I love so many of those kind of comedians that were in the four in the sort of 70s and 80s, um, you know, the 20th century. But I love lots of modern stuff as well. Daft humour. Yes, yeah, I yeah. love daft don't, humour. Don't take it too seriously. But is there, a, is there any performance that you remember that really made you go, this is what I want to do? Every year I'd go with my granny and all our grandkids, and we'd go to pantomime. That was our Christmas present. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was that. It, it was going in this sort of structured, organised mayhem, mm -hmm. you know, that you got. It, it was that yeah. at a very young age that made me want to do theatre and inspired me to say, that's what I want to do when I'm older. So a lot of people probably don't know this about you, but as you were growing up, you were actually brought up as a Mormon, is that true? Yeah, a lot of my family are still, uh, you know, a lot of my extended family are still in the Mormon church. Being gay, it was a kind of a difficult 
faith to grow up in. No, right enough now, I uh, have thought. So a really tough upbringing, was it? It's kind of a difficult thing to say. I never had a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. I, my family, have, have always, we've always loved to laugh. And even my extended family have always had really good relationship. Mm -hmm. But I think being gay, you don't really fit into the life experience that's expected of you. That must have been really tough for you, like being told all this by this Mormon religion, knowing deep down inside how you actually felt. I wouldn't say it was tough, but it was tricky. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh. tricky to grow up knowing that you weren't what other people expected you of from a very young age. You mind me asking, how old were you when you actually came out, or did you even need to come out? I did, I did. So I was 17, I think, when I right. first, no, 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 I was 18 when I came out to my mum, yeah. And she, her, her response was, she'll laugh at this, her response was, Mama, I think I'm gay, and she went, well. <laughs> <laughs> like, she must have known, do you know what I mean? But that's so I funny. I have actually had a conversation about her, but she just doesn't, it's not a thing. Well, you know? yeah, yeah, and that's brilliant. But see that when you just went, well, uh -huh. do it again. Well. You do that in panto. <laughs> you do that a in lot panto. Of you do, do that my from your mum. <laughs> yeah. So she's inspired you in more ways than one. Then. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you're known for being a panto dame. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say. So what, what? What was your first ever professional, not professional experience, but first ever experience of being a dame? I would say was when I was in Rothes Hall's Youth Theatre, mm -hmm. um, and I had to give a Queen's speech, and I had to give a. It was like I was dressed up as the Queen. I had to give a Queen's speech. So actually, that is my first ever experience, but it was only a ten-minute thing, and I had to. My husband and I, I kind of still remember the voice I had put on. Uh, yes, I quite enjoyed that. But my first ever actual experience of doing pantomime and doing mm -hmm. pantomime dame was at the RSAMD. The final acting year, they always do a pantomime every year. So our year we did Mother Goose. And bizarrely, I never, I never actually auditioned for the dame. I auditioned for the baddie. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I, just, I auditioned for the baddie and never got it but they cast me as the dame and I think they knew me I think they knew me better than I know my, I knew myself <laughs> yeah. at that point because if it wasn't for you know panto and doing panto dame I don't I genuinely don't think I would have a career <laughs> I just loved it it just it was like it wasn't even like acting it wasn't even like work I was so excited every every day for the two weeks that it ran to get up there mm -hmm. and, and and be a panto dame and I just so enjoyed the response that I was getting from the audience, yeah. and I've never really let that go. It's kind of always been, because it's comedy, that's what's <laughs> always what I've wanted to do, and to get that instant response that you get with pantomime, yeah. you just, I love panto. There's no, there's no other panto. feeling like it. It's Every single show you give 100%, I've always noticed that about you. Well, I do, and I'm you glad do. someone knows it. <laughs> so. Getting on to the gaiety then, you have performed here many, many times, especially as the dame, so tell us, how did that all come about? The gaiety closed in 2009, and when it reopened in 2012, I got the part as an ugly sister uh, with you at Cinderella. Yes. The buzz in the town, everyone was so excited mm -hmm. to see this theatre open again. I think people had... People might have thought it was a lost cause. So the fact that it opened, it was such good news. It was such yeah. a good, and the audiences were so appreciative. I had never been in the Gaiety before. I'd obviously heard of the Gaiety, mm -hmm. but I'd never been in the Gaiety Theatre before it had closed. It was I've only ever been here since it reopened in 2012. Yeah. That's my whole history with the Gaiety Theatre is wow. post, you know, after opening yeah. again in 2012. We can't get rid of you now. I know, we can't get rid of me. <laughs> a loiter. A loiter. <laughs> and off the back of that, so obviously you'd, you'd done so well and the audience really took to you and that's why the second year you were offered to come back and play... Widow Twanky. Yeah. Yes. That, was that a huge moment for you? It was. It was. That was the first time that I'd played Dame because Ugly Sister isn't actually classified as Dame. That's an ugly there sister. You so there you, you go. Are. You yep. can't say you're a dame if you're an ugly sister. So I'd played ugly sister the year before that in, a, in Cumbernauld. What's it called? Cumbernauld. <laughs> and the two years before that, I was understudying for Johnny McKnight in uh. the McRobert uh, Centre. So this was in 2013, playing Aladdin here at the Gaiety was the first ever time that I played dame. And oh, wow. I was just so, so, felt so lucky, felt so lucky to do it. Widow Twanky is like the archetype dame. That's the, that's yeah. the, the one that as a dame you, you want to play. And I got to play it here, obviously. Um, 
what can I say? She's just a, a mammy, isn't she? Mm -hmm. She's a mammy, but she's hard done by, isn't she? She's a, she's a terrible widow, you know? She lost her husband, he ran off with a sailor. Um, yeah, I just, <laughs> I just love plain Dame. I mean, Widow Twanky is the, the one that everybody covets, but yeah. oh, any day will do for me. Any, any day, day will do. Yeah. You shine when you're up there talking to the audience. I know you, like, you, you really, really do. You feed off them and, and they feed off you as well. And there's been so many times where I've just stood in the wings and listened to you. And especially one time <laughs> um, when there was a school in and you were talking and the teacher was in the front row. Oh, that was Tell my little that. twanky, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Oh, of course. I had to choose a man every time and pick on that a certain man. And if his name was Jim, it would be, oh, Jumbo Jim or whatever. I would, I would make up a stupid <laughs> name. But this man, of course, it's a school show. <laughs> this is embarrassing. So a school show. And I said, oh, what? I could only find one man in the audience, you know. I said, what's your name? And he said, William. And I said... Oh, Big Willie William. <laughs> now, I made Willie as in his name, Big Willie, and then repeated his name by saying William, so Big Willie William. And of course, all the kids are going, <laughs> <laughs> slap, that was a thigh slap of oh, the kid. Good. You know, it wasn't until I came off stage, I went, I just called that man Big Willie <laughs> William. <laughs> so, so would you say being up on this stage and hearing people laugh, is that one of, your great, is that one of the greatest feelings for you? I love that immediate response you get with the audience, and I love the... I love to see people laughing. I don't know why, I just yeah. do. I just love to be on stage, make a full of myself and see people laughing. I do, I don't mm. know why. I think, and I'm being quite serious, I think we really, it's something that we really need in the world. I'm really lucky that that's my job, you know? That I get that opportunity to spread the joy. Well, the audience is lucky to have you as well, let me say that. Now, you also said that you didn't think you would have a career path if it wasn't for the dame. Uh, yeah. Well, I think you're lying to me here because I've got it on uh, good grounds, would you say? Uh -huh. Information that you were actually in a Bollywood movie. Uh -huh. So you could have been a Bollywood star, <laughs> am I right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you are right, I was in a Bollywood movie. Like a real Bollywood A real movie. Bollywood movie, Tell yeah. Us about it, it. Was, it was, well, the movie was called uh, uh, Mossam which means seasons in Hindi. It was the biggest production that I've ever been involved in. So they all came over to Edinburgh right. to film, and I was cast as a squadron leader in the RAF. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I mean, I mean, that is absolutely my role. I look like a squadron leader in the RAF, but they had the full, you know, they had the full outfit, so much so that it was when the fringe was on, and we walked away from the filming a little bit. We'd had a break, so we walked up, it was in the grass market, and we walked up a little bit and someone from the RAF actually was looking at the filming and he walked up and I, I spied him and I thought, oh, he's got the same outfit as we've got on. And he saw us with the squadron leader stuff on and he literally dropped his bag and saluted us. I was like, no, I'm an actor, <laughs> don't, don't do that. If all go, doesn't go well with the Dame stuff, then Bollywood. I know, it beckons, it really does. <laughs> Bollywood, beckons. Bollywood beckons, I love it. We've, we've kind of brushed over your experiences here at the Gate. Is there any stories or laughs that you've got that you, you really stand out for you? There is a lot. I mean, when we got to go out to the audience and soak the audience and all the, the volunteers, I, I love all the Gate vol yeah. volunteers, go and soak them all with uh, water guns. But I just, I don't know, I just love all the off-the-cuff stuff that, mm -hmm. that, that you do in a panto, you know. The, all, the, all the things that you can get away with. Um, <laughs> you tend to get away with more than anyone else. <laughs> yes, I don't know why. I don't know why. I think I say uh, jokes that can, if you said it a different way, it might be obscene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. pretend I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So obviously with all your, your experiences in the panto, you've done four pantomimes, yeah. uh, you yeah. moved on, and then you were asked to come back, but not as a performer, but yeah, this they time, have they wouldn't have me back. <laughs> but they wanted you back as a co-writer yes. on Panto. And am I right in saying the first Panto you wrote with Ken Alexander yep, was Ken. Jack and the Beanstalk? That's right, right, Jack and the Beanstalk. And it was on here in 2019. And it was, I suppose, it was the first sort of full-length Panto that I've, I've, I've written uh, with Ken. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I think... Having done panto for so long, I think that I have obviously picked up a few things. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised as we were, as we were writing that, I was like, oh, kind of get panto. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I get panto, you know? Yeah. And we've written uh, Sleeping Beauty, but obviously that was postponed. Uh, that was supposed yeah. to go on in 2020, but of course. 
He must have been absolutely devastated with that. Just, just sticking with Jack and the Beanstalk first. The reviews for it were incredible. They really, really were. So you must have been really proud with the feedback that you got off it. I, I, I think we were really proud, and I was really proud that it was the first in-house production as well That's right. by the Gaiety since they've reopened. Mm -hmm. So that means that all the funds and everybody that goes to see the Panto and support, all the funds are going directly to the Gaiety. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to an outside production company. Yeah. And that's something that, for a theatre that had to close down for, for you know, funding issues, that's a great thing. That's a great huge thing. progress, huge uh -huh. progress. And I'm really, really proud to be part of it and be part of the team. Yeah. How devastated were you? Now, I know we were all devastated by COVID, but mm -hmm. to get so close to getting your second one up there, and I know you were really proud of this one, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. I, we, for some reason, it just took us, it was me and Ken, that was the second one we'd done together, so it just managed to write itself. It happened a lot quicker yeah. than Jack and the Beanstalk. I think we're getting into our, our groove, you know, mm. and it's with the pandemic and all theatres just being closed yeah. the way they are. It is devastating. It yeah. is. It's really, it's something that, it sounds like a daft thing to say, but it is something that feeds my soul, you know. I, yeah. I love to be yeah. in the theatre, I love to see theatre, I love to be on stage and to not ha have it for a year now, it's... It's crazy. It's too much. It is. We're all heart sick. We're all heart sick with it. So how have you been struggling? Like, I know, like a lot of performers, not just performers, I don't want to just say that, a lot of people have been struggling with mental health. No, I would say I've found it uh, tough. I think everybody's found it tough. I think what, when it first happened, naively I thought, oh, we'll be out by the summer and we'll be having a picnic. No. And then when Pants got cancelled, it was another, oh. And by the time we come on to the, the third lockdown, I'm, I, I mean, genuinely, I just feel really heart sick. Really heart sick now. And I just miss my friends and I miss my family. So what have you done to fill your time during lockdown? <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a personal <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> I have spent, and I had to deactivate my Just Eat account because at the, <laughs> talk about mental health and coping strategies, I spent... £849 on my Just Eat account. And when I saw that that's... On one delivery? On <laughs> <laughs> no, that was three. Three <laughs> deliveries. <laughs> no, when I, when I realised that I spent £849 during lockdown, that was up into December, I deleted my Just Eat account. It was like, no, that can't, no, that's outrageous. So it's gone? It's gone. gone. I don't, I've got an Uber Eats account. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I know, I know. So let's get back on. Uh, quickly, you were, a w well, nominated for a very, very prestigious award. Well, yes. We'll call it the most prestigious award gone. <laughs> it was. It was. It really was. When it comes to pantomime, you kind of get me a... You can well, prestigious right. in this. <laughs> so tell us, what, what was it again? I, was, I got nominated uh, for Best Dame at the Great British Panto Awards. Wow. And uh, I, I, had, I was really shocked. Because I mean, everybody, it, Facebook started blowing up. I started getting all these notifications. Uh, people saying congratulations. And I was like, what for? I was like, so that's I how know. you found out? Yeah, through social no media. Idea. And then you look at the, the, someone had tagged me in the video. And it's, um, they, they just read you out, out the name, best, uh, nominated for Best Dame. And... Here's me, nominated for Best Dame in the UK at Kilmarnock, along with people like Gary Wilmot at the Hackney Empire who won it. And, wow. you know, so it was great. I felt really, wow, that's so nice. that, And it's such a good thing, I think, the, the Great British Panto Awards, that they do that. They go out and they see, um, it's only, I think it's only in its fourth year now, um, but they, they go out and they see every panto and create the shortlist. So, so all the pantos in the UK, and they narrow it down to four dames, and you are one of those four. Yes, I was. Then I was, I was really proud. Really proud. No wonder you should be. Yeah. I mean, even not to win it. So, who would won it in the end? Was it Gary? Yeah, Gary Wilmot. Gary Wilmot. Yeah, yeah. Swine. <laughs> Region. I've had worms. But just to be mentioned alongside people like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, what what an achievement from doing your your proper first dame in what 2014? 2013. 13. Yeah. Uh -huh. Seven years later uh -huh. to be up there, and you flew down south, did you? Yes. Well, we ran. We ran. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we went, yeah, so it was at a theatre in Wimbledon, and it was it, honestly there was so many people. Like I can't even tell you the amount of celebrities, British celebrities that were there. So sitting in front of us, of me and my partner Alan was Darren Day and Anthea Turner, and uh, Christopher Biggins was hosting it. Wow. And uh, Sue Pollard was behind us. And the, she, she looked like a peacock. She had the most outrageous <laughs> garb on. And uh, she was heckling constantly. Uh, Darren, Don, Darren Day, rather, dropped his phone, and Alan picked up the phone and tapped him on the shoulder. I mean, you've dropped your phone. And That's your Darren, partner, Alan. Yeah, my yeah. partner, Alan. And Darren Day shook his hand. 
and we were like, <laughs> oh, what an experience. It was great fun. It was great to go and it was great to be part of. <laughs> well, like we say, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully. Hopefully that light doesn't go out anytime no. soon. <laughs> so tell us, what have you got planned for the future? What can we expect from Fraser Boyle? Jail time. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, obviously we've still got uh, Sleeping Beauty that'll be on here when theatres reopen, when yeah. we have news on that. Uh, and I will be back at the Palace Theatre in Kilmarnock doing Aladdin. I'm also writing a musical right now with my friend Alison uh, called Hen Night Horror. Oh. Uh, so that's um, a bit of a farce, an outrageous farce, actually, with original music, and we really hope that we can bring that to theatres in 2022. Just to wrap up, if there's anyone watching right now that's aspiring to be a dame or a panto performer, but especially a dame, what advice would you give to them? That's good. Um, I would say study all the, the, the old, the people that have been before you. And with YouTube now, you can do that so easily. Study all the people that have gone before you, but ultimately be yourself, um, love the audience, and enjoy, enjoy, the, enjoy the moment and play the game. Because it's a game at the end of the day, uh, pantomime, I think. And just be prepared, play the game. Be yourself and love the audience. That's the best advice I could do. Sterling advice as always. Unfortunately, mate, that's all we've got time for now. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed it. It's nice to get out of the house. It's nice to see you and it's nice to be at the gate. You as well. Thanks again, bud. You're welcome. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, a huge thanks to Fraser Boyle and all the staff here at the Air Gate Theatre. Also AMD Studios. But most of all, a huge thanks to everyone out there that's been watching. And if you enjoyed the show, give us a like on social media and share away. But for now, I'm Jerry Taylor. Stay safe, everyone. See you all again.